Christmas is coming up. Look at my swag. Dinosaurs at a dance party. Speaking of dinosaurs, you guys want to know a really sad fact and ruin Jurassic Park for you? You know, raptors that were really scary in the movies? Do you know how big they actually were? I mean, technically, they could grow up to be about like six feet long, but it turns out it's not six feet tall. It's six feet from tail to nose. So really, they were like the size of like turkeys. I was really, really disappointed when I heard that. I thought raptors were these crazy, cool, man-eating creatures, but it would probably be like, get away from me, stop it. It's like a chihuahua just like ankle biting you. Anyways, you're probably watching this video to try to pick out some gifts for your significant other or your friend or your child or parent or whatever, someone that's into cameras. Or maybe you're just gonna buy this all as a Christmas gift to yourself. I mean, let's be real, by the end of December, you're gonna be so broke. And if you're gonna go broke, you might as well have gone broke by buying yourself a bunch of video gear and you could give all your loved ones like gifts with thought behind it. If you're trying to get gifts for a camera person, then uh, it's very hard to find inexpensive gifts for under 30 bucks. Like there's very little you can actually give somebody that's camera related except for like maybe like some SD cards. Like thinking about it, if someone gave me an SD card, I'd be like, well, thank you. I can never have enough of these. I keep losing them or just like a hair trimmer. I don't know. Whoa, oh my God, a lot of hair just came out. Uh, I should probably turn this off before uh, I, okay. Oh, it's actually super hot in this room. I live in Los Angeles and we don't really get winter here. So I just really put on that sweater to be part of the Christmas spirit and all. So let's try to come up with some things that are preferably under a hundred dollars, at least to get us started. Uh, ooh, this microphone right here. It's 52 bucks and it's a pretty good microphone. As long as this person has a camera with a mic port on it, then this will give them better sound. So cool. It's 52 bucks and 30 cents, or you could get them a better microphone. The Rode VideoMic Pro Plus is really, really nice, but it's $260. So it eh, depends on how much you care about this person. This micro though, it's 52 bucks. One thing to keep in mind is to make sure you get one from Rode. There's other companies that make one that look exactly like this for like 10 bucks cheaper and they're crap. The shock mount doesn't sound as good. The audio just sounds all jacked up. Just get the Rode VideoMic. It's only like a 10, maybe $15 difference. It's definitely worth that difference to get the road. Next up is lighting. You could pretty much never have too much lighting. So if you don't know what kind of camera that your friend has or whatever, you could always give them a light and they'll be like, oh, I'll add this to my collection. And one simple one to do is this aperture light. This little light here is 45 bucks. And this thing is awesome because it's tiny and it's powerful and the light is clean. And what's cool about this is I can use it for very small productions. I can literally just mount it right up here and use it for a little little video vlog. And I can sometimes even use this light in a professional setting because sometimes we just need to tuck a little tiny light in a little corner for a quick shot. So these little guys, very, very inexpensive and can be useful for pretty much any production. And then of course there's the Bigger Brother Aperture 120D, one of my favorite lights. I did a whole video comparing a bunch of different lights and this one came up on top. Highly recommend this light. I'm gonna link all these products and all these links to the videos I'm talking about down below. There's also a Mark II that came out that's to be brighter and better. I haven't tested it out yet, but it might be worth checking out. You should have decided to give a gift that's not camera related, because now, everything is just gonna go up in price from here. Another idea is a gimbal, which is taking the camera world by storm. It basically takes any camera and makes it so it can move very smoothly like a steady cam. And you could even just get one for your phone and they start at about $100. So you can take your phone, which is already pretty decent and then kind of step up the production value of your phone camera. I would recommend this one, which is a FreeFly Movi Cinema Robot. FreeFly makes like top quality stuff. So this would be a gimbal that you can use on your phone now and it's probably gonna last you years and years of use. So when the iPhone 18 comes out, you'll probably be able to still use this free fly gimbal with that phone. I have a whole video on this gimbal and that's at the price year end at $299. I have a coupon down below, 30 bucks off. Yay. But you can get other ones for cheaper. DJI makes one, the Xeon makes one. They make generally decent stuff. And let's say this person has a little camera kind of like this, or maybe something kind of like this, and you want to get a gimbal for that, then I would recommend the Xeon Crane V2, which is 349 right now. I have a whole video on that as well. And it can fly cameras like this. Let's say they have a bigger camera kind of like this guy than the Ronin S, but that's going to drive up that price. And let's say they have like a really awesome cinema camera like the 
Red or something, then get them the Free Fly Movi Pro. But you really, really have to love them to give them this because uh, the price is uh, kind of expensive. But this is kind of moving off topic because we're talking about Christmas gifts, right? Okay, focus. Next up is the GoPro Hero 7 Black. GoPro comes in many different flavors and some are way less expensive than this one. But the 7 Black has a lot of really awesome features. The Hyper Smooth specifically, you can use this as an action camera. You could throw it on your helmet if you do action stuff. These things are built like a tank. You could take it underwater. You could throw it on the ground and these things keep recording. So it's a perfect little action camera, super wide angle lens. And I also made a video about how to convert this into a vlog camera. So very versatile, little camera, very simple to use. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, the GoPro is very awesome and very capable and very simple. But if you're a little bit tech savvy and want to experiment with something really, really interesting, that might be worth taking a look at the Insta360 One X. They're both action cameras and they're both priced very similarly. So it's worth checking out my video where I compare these two if you're interested in an action camera. And Insta360 did give me an affiliate link. So if you use that to buy this, then you get a free selfie stick with it. So you can put it at the end of a stick and do all kinds of crazy effects. If your goal is to create mind-blowingly unique shots and come up with some really creative, interesting stuff, then this might be the option for you. Another thing every camera guy needs is a monitor, whether they're shooting on little cameras like this or big cameras like this. And what's great about monitors is that they fit pretty much all cameras. Like Small HD makes some pretty good monitors, but they're definitely not cheap. Try to get one that's 1080p, especially if you're shooting 4K, then that 1080p really helps you get that critical focus. Now, a company called Feel World sent me some monitors recently, and they're very inexpensive monitors that are full HD, and they're not the best monitors I've ever used. The build quality just isn't as good as like a professional monitor, and professional monitors have like quarter inch threads all over the place, so you could mount all kinds of stuff to it. I don't know the durability and the longevity of these monitors, but considering its price, you can't really beat it. At least these monitors are full HD and they are sharp enough to let you make sure that you hit that critical focus. Because if you're pulling manual focus and you're like, oh, that looks pretty good. When you download the footage, you're gonna look at it and be like, wow. Most of my shots are slightly out of focus. Let's say you're trying to start a YouTube channel or film some travel videos. This is one of the cameras I highly recommend. This is the Canon M50. Very small, lightweight, interchangeable lenses, so it's very flexible. You can start with this camera and you can grow on it by adding on lenses. You could add on microphones and you could build on this camera for a while before you outgrow it. So this is one camera that I highly recommend. Right now, this with a kit lens is 600 bucks on Amazon. Usually I'll go to eBay and they have these deals where it's even cheaper, 479. So it might be worth just typing in this model number on eBay. I don't know why they're so much cheaper, but they're new. I mean, definitely read through all this. There might be a little catch in there somewhere. But for the most part, I've bought stuff on eBay before and it said new and it came and I haven't had any issues with it. But damn it, I just realized I don't get commission if you don't use my Amazon links below. So you know what? Just forget about eBay. Don't save money. Just go on Amazon and just use my links below. Now, let's say you're buying it for someone that's not super interested interested in cameras. They want something super simple, something smaller than this, preferably something that fits in your pocket. Just a very basic point and shoot camera. Then I suggest this right here, which is the Canon G7X Mark II. This may look like a little toy camera, but it's very powerful and it has the lens and everything you need just right here and it fits in your pocket. I did a whole video where I compare this to the Canon ADD, which is what I'm shooting on right now. And it's surprisingly close in terms of quality. This does everything very well and it's very simple to use. Use. You can use it to vlog, you can create a YouTube video, travel videos, all that stuff. Highly recommend it for something very basic and fits in your pocket. So again, the G7X Mark II and the Canon M50, both great options for YouTube. And the reason why I say that is because they're both flexible. They look pretty good out of the box. Great autofocus, they have good battery life and they're very simple to use. And the quality that you get out of both these cameras are awesome. Definitely plenty for YouTube. But let's say your goal is to become a cinematographer or film filmmaker, then you're usually less interested in filming yourself. And then you're more interested in getting that cinematic look. Like you want to work with actors or film drama or whatever. This camera becomes a little bit more interesting. This is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Now I'm not saying this is the best camera yet. I still have a lot of testing to do with this camera. And when I first got it, it worked for about five minutes and stopped working on me. So I kind of put a bad taste in my mouth on these Blackmagic cameras. They're not really known for having great reliability and all that, 
But for $1,300, what this camera does is pretty impressive if you're not concerned about autofocus and all that. You're getting nice cinematic looking colors for $1,300. And as far as I know, there's nothing in this price range that can achieve what this can. This records RAW and ProRes, a lot of features that professional cameras have to offer. But of course, there's gonna be some shortcomings because it's again, $1,300, which is way cheaper than most DSLRs. And this is trying to compete with cinema cameras. This is a camera that works best when it has your full attention. You wanna manually focus everything. You wanna take it and color grade it in post. You're gonna have to put some work in to get the outcome you want with this camera. But in the end, it's gonna look great. Opposed to a camera like this, this will give you a really good image with very little effort. This takes effort, but it looks great. But like I said, this stopped working on me five minutes after I got it, so I had to send it in. But they got me a whole new unit back to me within a week of shipping it out. It's not gonna be the best camera in the world, but for this price point, this might be your best option if you're just trying to get cinematic images and you're willing to put in that work. And the final thing we're gonna talk about are drones. In terms of getting a good flight and getting good images out of a consumer level drone, I don't think you could be DJI. So on the low end, there's drones like the DJI Spark, but the one I really, really love is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. This thing is a beast. The Mavic 2 Pro is the top of the line in terms of their Mavic series, but this thing is well worth every dollar because the cinematic images you get out of this are insane. $1,500, but I don't know. Maybe some of you guys are like dentists loaded with money and you have someone that you really care about and you want to give them a drone then, you know. Anyways, I've been kind of teasing you guys about how I'm moving out of my apartment and into a house with a couple friends finally. And after a ton of searching, we finally found our place. So this is the new potato jet house. Come on, let's go take a little tour. Let me show you around. I'm just kidding. This is definitely not my place. And actually we should probably get out of here before security comes out with a shotgun like get out of here, you middle class asshole. We're just looking to rent a house, but man, like property in Los Angeles is so expensive. This is actually a house that's on sale right now. And guess how much the monthly mortgage is? It's like $13,000 a month estimated on Zillow. So <laughs> anyways, maybe if some of you guys have like $3 million laying around, then, you know, please come by this house and let me film in it. We are getting pretty close at finding our new place though. We looked at five places yesterday. We're really close. We're gonna look at a few more today. So fingers crossed that in about two weeks to a month, we'll be in our new place. I can't wait. Anyways, let's read some comments and I'm just gonna continue to stand here in front of this house to feel like I'm, I'm, I'm important. My last video was about the Canon 100 millimeter L series macro lens. Let's see what the top comment was. A yes to did you fart is something Russell from up to say. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just spark? Yes. <laughs> as much as I hate this comment, it's pretty accurate. <laughs> Loba Production says, when you get your Blackmagic Pocket Camera back, could you do uh, Blackmagic versus Red or an Aerie Alexa? I'd love to see the difference. Yes, absolutely. That's definitely something that I want to test out for myself, even to really see how different they are. But first impressions, it's looking pretty good. I think it reminds me a lot of shooting on the Sony FS7 on S-Log3 in terms of just kind of the characteristics of how the image looks, but so far, so good aside from it breaking that one time. Henry, way to go. <laughs> Way to go, Henry. <laughs> Isn't Henry the cutest baby ever? I sure hope DJI sent you their new Osmo. <laughs> I wish they sent me stuff, but I think I said too many bad things about them in the past where they don't want to send me anything, but I did buy it, so I will review that for sure. I deserve a pin for being this early. I, I agree. How could I, yeah. Let's do it. I'm Samson said, I bet you a cookie you won't put this in the next video. Well, looks like you owe me a cookie. I'll take a peanut butter or maybe salted caramel. One of those will work. I kind of like the savory and sweet mixture. Charles asks, is that your girlfriend? Yes. For someone who's getting their second lens, would you recommend the 75 to 300 zoom lens or the 50 millimeter? Well, it kind of depends on what lens you already have and what you're trying to achieve. The 70 to 300 would obviously be great for if you're trying to film something super far away, but a good 50 millimeter prime is one of the lenses I use the most. It's gonna be a lot less expensive to get a good 50 millimeter opposed to a good 70 to 300. So generally I would say the 50 millimeter prime, that's usually the second or third lens I recommend people to get. But often if you find yourself trying to film something from really far away, like if you're in a stadium and you're filming sports, then maybe the 70 to 300. Anyways, I gotta get out of here before that security guard comes out. So I'll see you guys later, bye.